So I'm thrilled today for episode 20 of the Scaling Your Business podcast to have Fidelma, the founder and CEO of Payslip. Fidelma, you're very welcome to the show. Hi, Irene. Great to be here today. Thank you very much for the, t- the time with you. Absolutely thrilled to have you here. Look, I want to dive into a bit about the person behind Payslip, obviously being you. So let me take you back a few chapters. You graduated at Trinity with a degree in business and German. And one of your first jobs was in recruitment at AIR. What did that role specifically recruitment teach you? And did you take any of those lessons learned to future roles? Uh, yeah, it was a great role because it was a graduate entry role into, into HR and AIR, um, AIRCOM as it was known then, was going through a massive transformational change whereby they hadn't externally recruited in more than 20 years. So there hadn't been an external recruitment function. So when I went in, we had to set up that function. So I got a lot of opportunity to do things that probably most graduates wouldn't normally get to do. So for example, I learned how to run formal RFPs, procurement processes with other recruitment agencies, how to manage that, engage with them, all that, the the management of the contracts with them. Uh, We had to do large campaign management uh, for large recruitment campaigns. We were setting up a whole new business unit for something that was new at the time called broadband. You might you might have heard of it since then because <laughs> it was going to transform the whole country. Um, it was the first time that's 20 years ago now. And then we also um, had to set up um, a recruitment website, which was really a novel idea at the time. And that whole idea about employer branding. And because Aircom was known as a very traditional um, telecoms provider, we were competing against ESAT, who were like the really shiny, the shiny new thing in the garage. Everybody wants to work in ESA. So it was really quite a challenge to present how exciting the engineering and product jobs were when you were competing with a company that was uh, so well-funded and innovative as ESA. Amazing, amazing broadband. I laughed at that. Um, you, I, I referenced earlier on, you're a graduate from Trinity, having studied in business in German. I can also notice, I can also see that you spent some time studying in Germany. Um, that coupled with some of your previous roles, um, I'm going to hazard a guess that you've traveled a fair bit. So with that in mind, when COVID lifts, I'm curious to know, what's the first city you have in mind to visit? Well, work-wise, I really want to see a visit uh, two cities. One is Varna in Bulgaria because we have a great team of engineers there and product. And I'm normally there every quarter and I haven't been there in over a year. So I really miss that. It's also a very um, cheat, cheat way of getting a little bit of sun into the bones because the weather's <laughs> fantastic and it's beside the sea and they have great fish. So I definitely want to go to Varna first. And then the other work-related item is um, I'm in the habit of going to San Francisco at least once, if not twice a year over the last few Very years, cool. because a lot of our customers are high growth technology companies based out of California. and We do a lot of business there. So um, I'm, I'm used to running by the Red Bridge, the San Francisco Bridge and all around the parks. So I would also like to head back there work-wise. Amazing. Two completely different destinations, but uh, I would equally like to uh, travel to get some sun as well. You were originally from Wexford. I know you spent some time living in Swords. From my research, I know that you are a fan of hiking. So I'm curious to know what's what's one thing, and and Westport, I'm sure, has tons of, I attempted once to do Crow Patrick, and it was too foggy at the top to get to the very, very top. So I have to go back and do it. What's one thing that you're into that not a lot of people know about? Um, I picked up kayaking last year. That's my COVID uh, new hobby. So um, we do we do have a boat, and I suppose the one thing that really not many people would know about is that we're quite good at lobster fishing. Uh, I bought some lobster pots for my husband a couple of years ago. So um, obviously there's rules not to take too many lobsters out of the sea. Yeah. Um, but actually we we do that a lot in the summer during the boating season. But last year um, there were rules that you you couldn't go out in the main boats because the RNLI couldn't be risked, obviously. So, but you could go locally in safe areas. So we bought a couple of kayaks and uh, we live very close to Croke Patrick actually that you mentioned and beside the ocean. So really we have the kayaks at the bottom of the garden and we pick them up, we walk across the road and we get into the sea. Uh, and we've already done that three times over the last couple of weeks, which is pretty good for March in, uh, in 2021. That's a different life compared to swords. I can tell you that. 
completely I'm different life. I'm afraid that is kind of why we left. <laughs> <laughs> Swords was good to us when we were there, though, and my husband is from Swords, and we have a lot of family there, so Swords was good to us when we were there. Yeah, nice. I'm only about 15 minutes, 20 minutes on the road from Swords myself. Um, okay. So as I uh, transition into your current role, CEO, founder of Payslip, everyone when they're younger has a dream job. Mine, for some strange reason, was to be a hotel manager. I'm not okay. a hotel manager. I tried, tested it, didn't like it. Yeah, um, tough, tough job. Well, yeah, it was, it was my uncle said to me when, when I was 14 or 15, he said, you don't want to do that. Uh, you'll get paid very little and you'll work more hours than anyone else. Um, what, what, really yeah, what was your dream job from when you were a child? I, I, I have to admit now, I told my children many times, I haven't yet decided what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't really have a good answer. Um, being honest, though, when I want, was trying to work out what to do after school, I really wanted to study history. Like I, I didn't actually know anything about business. I didn't know anybody who had been a business person. Um, I wanted to study German and I didn't want to be a teacher. So, and I didn't want to be a translator. So I chose business and German because business made more sense to me than um, anything else with German. So I would really have preferred to have studied history, but I didn't know that you could do anything other than be a history teacher. And I didn't want to be a teacher. So, um, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And even in college, I, um, I chose the HR stream all the time. Whereas kind of years later, I know that really I was naturally attracted to all of the operations and strategy related courses. Um, uh, but anyway, you, you, went, you end up somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Payslip, your current company. For those who aren't familiar with Payslip, can you take 30 seconds to tell people what it is? Yeah, we build automation and integration technology for multinational companies to manage global payroll. So for example, Fife's uh, Log Me In, Teamwork, high growth companies, they're in loads of countries. They outsource their payroll to different payroll providers. There's a lot of data flowing and they have a lot of people involved in different countries. They use our technology to manage all of the payroll processes, the data flows and those vendors in one platform in a standardized way across the different countries. Okay, okay. And as the CEO of the company, um, I'm sure you continue to invest in yourself. How do you do that currently? Um, so yeah, I'm the CEO of Payslip. We have a, a, a strong team now. Uh, we're based in Ireland and Westport and in Dublin. And then as I mentioned in Bulgaria, we also have some team members in the UK, Spain and the US. So we're continuing to grow aggressively. The most important thing that we do now is um, grow our, our number of customers and the scale of those customers. So we are, hence we, we uh, have hired some sales team. We're closing mm -hmm. a fundraise um, over the next few weeks as well, which means that we'll have additional capacity to grow the team even more. So we have um, over 20 uh, new open positions at the moment, um, and we'll hire the best people that we find where they are, ideally in Westport in Ireland. Uh, but we'll see where, where the best talent is. Okay, okay. Lead generation. So when you, let's say you've hired those people or your, or your current team of, I think it was 30 through my research um, that go out and generate new business. Um, for, for me, when it comes to lead generation, I'm a big believer in a cookbook. And what I mean by that is a, kind of a daily list of must-do things to continue to keep your pipeline healthy so that you can reach the targets you want to reach mm -hmm. things that would be in mind would be i need to make x number of phone calls i need to ask for y number of referrals and so on and so forth curious to know from payslip's point of view what are the top three lead generation sources linkedin referrals networking cold calling yeah linkedin is important the um, the kind of golden pages isn't really operational anymore mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, gdpr and covid um so LinkedIn is important to us. We, first of all, have a very strong go-to-market team uh, led by the Chief Marketing Officer, Aoife. Um, so we have a combination of thought leadership, content-led and paid um, online digital uh, marketing activities. Um, mm. On top of that, we use LinkedIn directly by the sales team um, and we're very structured in our, our target customer. So we take an account-based management approach to who we're, who we're intent on securing as customers um, and we integrate then across that that go-to-market that I mentioned and also the activities of the salespeople to try and keep it integrated 
we would normally really like some trade shows. There's some key global payroll or um, HR or fintech conferences we would have gone to. They're all um, either postponed or gone digital and we don't find them as effective when they're virtual. So yeah. we have um, paused that budget for this year. Okay, okay. Accountability is one of the things that I wanted to touch on with you. So let's let's jump into that straight away. What does accountability mean to you? Well, I'm a little bit of a longer answer. Firstly, I have two things in mind. One is um, we have a strong belief system in Payslip that nobody owns creativity and nobody owns accountability. Everybody owns it. So I may have had the original vision at the start for what we were going to build, but now that vision is enhanced every day by every person in Payslip, whether they provide tech support to the customers or whether they're customer success or whether they're actually in engineering because everybody in their own job, we figure after two months. So the first two months they come in and they should kind of follow the tracks and do the work as we show them how we do it. And two months and a day later, we want them to tell us how they can do the job better than, than we showed them how to do it. So everybody will have an idea about how they can be better in their own job and use the time smarter to then be more useful and creative. So as a result, it's inherent in everybody's job that we are only seeking people who want to have an impact. And then they, and we assume that everybody comes to work to do something interesting every day. So accountability is built in automatically in all of those core values that we have about who we, who we um, bring into the team, how we build a workspace for them to uh, be creative, make mistakes, not burn down the house, and then actually how they can grow in the jobs because they want to have an impact, which means they want every minute that they're working to count for something interesting to do. And that automatically brings in accountability as a fulfilling concept mm -hmm. rather than kind of a scary concept. You mentioned seeking out the, the best people. Being located in Westport and as a tech company, how do you compete with the likes of Teamwork, Log Me In, there's others, yeah. Salesforce, how do you compete with the likes of them for talent, especially being located in Westport? Yeah, so, well, the whole country has to compete against Workday, mm -hmm. Facebook, like it's Stripe now are going to hire a thousand of the best people in the country. It's going to be tricky for everybody. Um, being in Westport, firstly, is, is a great thing. Uh, it, um, all all people in Western Ireland, uh, unless they're near Limerick or near the universities in Galway, they usually have to go away to university and to get experience in other places. So if they do want to come back, then it's very attractive. There aren't many technology companies in Mayo. And being in Westport means, as you mentioned earlier, we're beside the mountains, the seas, the sports. There's a very, like, nobody has to ask about work-life balance in Westport because it's 10 minutes to go home, it's 10 minutes to go anywhere, and, and we right. have it. So if there are people who've left and have gotten experience in other places and want to come back, then that's a very good opportunity to grow the talent base here in Payslip. And we see that already happening during COVID. We've had some fantastic applications. Um, separately, though, we do have Dublin as a, as a fallback location in Ireland. We have a team of four there at the moment, and that's going to grow. Um, and then we'll have to see. We've, we've always been remote enabling in terms of where people work. Um, I've never had my entire team in my last 20 years of working beside me in one room, unfortunately. So I'm used to having people in different places. And as long as you have clear focus on what we're all here to do and good systems through which we all work together, people can actually work anywhere. Yes. Uh, the reason why I asked the question was because uh, I think he's also from Mayo, Niall McGarry, uh, Maximum Media. I, yeah. I went to Castle, a talk, Castle Bar, man. Castle Bar, and Castle Bar, and you're in, in, in Westport. Westport. And do they, are they, is that like a big rivalry? There is actually, I'm from Wexford, so it doesn't matter to me, but according to the, the Castle Bar Westport language, anybody in Westport is called a covey, and anybody in Castle Bar is called a fish head. And the Westport people call the Castlebar people fish heads because they consider that uh -huh. they'll eat everything, including the fish head. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know the rest of the story behind that, but it's, it's a good local joke. <laughs> Niall McGarry, I attended a talk he gave probably two years ago. So this is prior to COVID, and he said one of the reasons he has an office in Dublin is because uh, he wants to hire really good talent, and he can't find that back in, in uh, Mayo. Uh, wherever he's based in Mayo, I imagine that's now changed because of COVID. That there's mm. going to be local hubs, which is which was what prompted me to ask the question. Yeah, there's a local hub, and we're based in one of them. Though we'll probably need to seek out some other space now with the expansion of the team. 
the the issue it does come back this, this is like closing closing the circle well in the conversation it does come back to broadband when you're uh, in any part of the country so in westport we have fantastic broadband i have over a gigabit uh, like fiber to the door in my house here and in the office in westport we have both the normal uh, networks available in westport and also syro built out their network to westport uh, about, the, about two years ago so we have excellent broadband but then if you go 15 miles out the road for kilometers it may not be as reliable so um, uh, nowadays when you have strong broadband people can work from here we like we service our global employer companies the american companies from here no problem at all talent wise Amazing. i think i honestly i think there's a bit of an opportunity the the, the wild atlantic way was a brilliant tourism initiative by tourism ireland over the last mm. 10 years we can see it paid great dividends i think there needs to be a similar um connected um approach for recommending or supporting working in the west of ireland like the wild atlantic way kind of working on the atlantic way because if you do go to advertise jobs in the west there's no single place to do so so you need to kind of go to different agencies or go into the papers it just all the other methods it doesn't Agreed. really work uh whereas i think there's a real opportunity to kind of bring that together for the whole West side. If people are from Sligo, they're happy to move to Mayo. If people are from Galway, they're happy to move to Mayo. Likewise, you know, they're not as fussy that it's which county it is, as long as it's kind of nearer to the to yeah. the to the wild winds of the West. You know, I think there's an opportunity there that would help talent move back uh, faster. I completely agree, and it's actually something funny enough that Niall McGarry posted about yesterday. Um, the the exact point that you're making. I've always wondered what's the future role for. The, the likes of WeWork and maybe it's investing and building in um, WeWork training hubs in the likes of Westport, Cork, Tralee, um, so that people can, you know, go up to Dublin once a month or go over to Cork once a month, but then work yeah, and they live. Can, they can, but they might need to because the local enterprise offices are already ahead of them on the game. Okay. So like the our office space in... Um, in Westport is in um, a local enterprise office building that was set up with the Chamber of Commerce in Westport. And in there you Amazing. have a collection of different offices for businesses that are larger. And then you also have a co-working room. So I was the first person in there on the 1st of July in 2016 on my own in a co-working room. And now the building is full. And then I have like my team of 12 or whatever in our rooms. And now we're expanding out of that. So it really serves to purpose. There's also a second privately one a privately owned one that was set up recently near the train station and the leo offices are part of a network so if you want to work here in westport you can also use the guinness enterprise center in dublin so you have a place to work on and they can come down and work out of the westport one so they have this network of the leo offices around the country so you can go to the different places which is really useful if you're meeting clients or going you need to go somewhere for a few days so the infrastructure is there is what you're telling me it's just about promoting it and raising awareness of it it's in lots of places, yeah. The Porter Shed is very strong in Galway. There's some really great setups down in Washford and in Kerry as well. I don't know all of them, but I'm sure they they have them in Sligo and Donegal. I just wouldn't have tracked that as much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as a startup founder, how do you personally evaluate whether your performance has met your expectations? Have you got a day set aside every quarter? Have you got a coach? Have you got someone to share it with? A group of people? Oh, well, everyone will tell me what they think, Regan, don't worry. <laughs> but uh, we have, um, yeah, we said, we said that we have a business plan, you know, like other good, mm. well-run businesses, we have a business plan for what we want to achieve for the year. We track against that. Our accountant tracks on the financial metrics. Then we have our customer acquisition metrics and our pipeline metrics. So we track against all of those pieces. And in the end, you know, when you're starting up as a startup, the most important thing is to try and get more, and more customers on the system get high adoption and get high expansion on the system. So we do see that for all of the customers that have ever come on our platform, like customer, like international companies like Lab Yen or, or Nitro or domestic uh, leaders like Nearform who made the COVID app, they all, whenever they come on, they always expand the number of countries and the number of people. So we know their satisfaction with the product and platform is very, very high and their promoter score references are very high. So we just need to go and get a lot more customers as our main target. Three more questions. Question number one is, have you got a current book that you're reading or a regular podcast that you listen to? 
I'm not brilliant on the podcast just because I spend so much time on on computers during the day. I try not to be connected to something mm-hmm. outside of it. The book at the moment that I'm reading is called uh, The Monk That Sold His Ferrari. So that's what I'm reading at the moment. Second last question is, I've already mentioned you're a hiking fan. What's your favorite hike in all of Ireland? It's probably still down, you know, in Wicklow, even though I love the Mayo hikes, but I haven't done enough of them probably yet. And I spent all my 20s hiking around Wicklow. So a lot of time in Glendalough, a lot of time. Yeah, I, I like all around there. It's quite good. I love Glendalough myself as well. I do have to go back, as I said, to Westport to to complete Crow Patrick. Um, okay, well, last we, we will look after you, Ian. There are shortcuts as well as long cuts. <laughs> well, the the truth be told, the, the real reason why we never made it to the top was I wasn't alone. There was a couple of people who were, were hung over, and yeah. uh, I used it as an easy out to go. We'll take a rest here, and then we try to chat for a while, and then we ended up leaving yeah. it short so but the, it's it's nearly always foggy at the top so if you get two thirds of the way up onto the shoulder the view is nearly there like you can yeah. see a lot from there yeah it, it 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 it's it's amazing it's one of the uh most recent places i've been to actually when they lifted the uh restrictions back a couple of months ago uh, yeah. i went i went to westport with my father for two nights oh um, yeah great it was that or Dubai, and we settled on Westport to go. Well, we had lovely weather there then, so here then, and uh, as you said, the fish. So next time now, you'll have to give me a call, and I'll bring you out to catch a few lobsters. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, future plans for, for Payslip. What do the next three to five years, in a nutshell, look like for Payslip? Massive growth. Mm. Yeah, we have... Um, fantastic new customers going live on the platform now and growing uh the average customer has is coming on board with about 19 countries so we can see that we're already our customers are already running payrolls across 70 countries already and that's growing all the time so i'd say we're going to be over 90 countries in the next two months so that's fantastic uh in terms of validation we also have a lot of um integrations happening across workday and um, SAP success factors and people software, different customers. And we have several very large enterprise companies closing over the next few weeks. And um, that will bring some of them are like have over 100,000 employees. So that will bring massive implementations into play this year. So it, it's a big year this year. And then we, with hiring the extra salespeople we've hired recently and some other people that we need for strategic partnerships and alliances, we would see that the growth path next year will probably be double what we had this year. That's amazing. Fidelma, I wish you the best of luck uh, in, in all your future success. It's, I've had a, a real pleasure getting to understand the person behind Payslip, and uh, I might one day move out to Westport as well and leave uh, the life of Mead behind. Yeah, well, Mead is a great place, and they have lovely horses as well. So, yeah. but you're welcome anytime in Westport. We look after you, Ian. Let us know when you're coming down.